Vice. We were talking about Vice. I invited my good friend um, Julian Kelly, who had been here before when we were talking about the bike surveys that we had done, how many students own bikes, who rides bikes. Would um, you like to tell us about the sure. Exciting Bike Day? Sure. As you may know, uh, the mayor and um, others in city government are in, interested in making Fall River a bicycle friendly city. And so we've been working, I, I work for Mass in Motion, that's a special grant from the state, uh, but it's to work with city governments on changes in policy and environments. And so one big project has been the Quickishan River Rail Trail. And hopefully in the next four years or so, there will be a boardwalk connecting the small bike path over on the South Watapa right down off of Brayton, right down to Britland, uh, Britland Park, and um, you know, begin to be a connector. Uh, hopefully at some point, the South Coast Bikeway, which will connect Rhode Island right out to the Cape, and then along the Cape. These bike, bike trails, <coughs> bike pathways, will not be used by, you know, be used by my age or middle-aged people, but but we really need to get the kids involved and we need to get the city to respond so that parents can feel that it is safe for their kids. And I also want to uh, you know, congratulate uh, Tansy School was the first school to have a ride, ride your bike to school day. And that was very, very exciting. We had about 40 kids receive bicycle helmets prior to the day. And then they showed up with their parents and their people from the Fall River Bicycle Committee and the vice principal, principal, and um, uh, Matt, the phys ed teacher, and everybody rode up to TNC. It was a half mile ride. <laughs> but boy, the police were there to close down the roads, and those kids just took over the road, and there were smiles from ear to ear. It was, it was really fun and a wonderful experience. So we want to follow up on these kinds of activities. And so the Fall River Bicycle Committee, uh, the mayor's appointed bicycle commission, Mass in Motion, the Parks Department, and Fall River Park Advocates has put together uh, Fall River Bicycle Safety Day on Sunday from noon to 2 o'clock. And basically, we have events for all ages. Um, the focus, to some degree, is going to be though on, on the importance of wearing a helmet. It's, it's the law, for one thing. And followed by a bike ra rodeo that the Fall River uh, Police Department is going to organize and carry out. And that's all about skills and safety on bicycles, quick turns, quick stops. Those lots, lots of things going on yeah. relative to biking, especially in, um, in Fall River. Lots of good things going on, period. And one of the good things going on is I presented this afternoon about, about whom I am thrilled to have been able to connect. I don't like to usually read things, but I want to read to you something, some of her credits, because I want to be sure that I don't miss anything. But I'm very impressed, and you all need to be very impressed, too. Uh, Marsha Frederick Blanchett is a certified personal fitness trainer, certified group fitness trainer instructor, CPR certified, safety certified, competitive gymnastic coach. She was the first United States world gymnastic champion two-time world gymnastic champion, competed against uh, Nadia Khamenei, correct? I beat Nadia. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I didn't okay. know that part. I had heard, I forgot Scott had told me that you had competed, but I didn't beat her. the first one to take well, down step. Uh -huh. Now I'm even more interested. You know, the people who weren't able to make it today? I'll be definitely impressed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah, besides all this other stuff, I mean, that's a name drop. I was to come today to kind of pay kudos to all of you, because we are fitness professionals, whether we're in a school or in a gymnastic gym or on a field teaching football or tennis. What makes it a little more interesting, not just my background, because I could have been a great gymnast, but not a great instructor, not a great coach. What I found as a ex-athlete, an ex-prodigy athlete, I found uh, I became uh, a mother of gymnasts who weren't great athletes. One of them a competitive gymnast, the other one absolutely not. I found myself in a position where uh, I was a single mother. I also could not afford every program out there. I couldn't do that. My older daughter was a gymnast who could not work with me. At all. At all. My own 
younger son, and this is where I learned an awful lot about school, where his activities were in school. His only physical activity was in school. And unfortunately, with the invention of video games, all activities with the majority of the people that I work with are in school. And the challenges you all have compared to what I have. I work in a gymnastic gym. We have props all over. We use big wheels. Because we can't have metal in the gym. We can only have plastic. So I use big wheels. But I work with children as young as five years old, four years old now, four years old, and teenagers, all the way up to 17. I have two teenagers. Mm -hmm. And the challenges of a four-year-old clearly different than the challenges of teenagers. We also get the type of child now that is a little entitled. Well, you're not my mommy. And I get a lot of, you're not my mommy, I don't have to do this type of thing. So I have to be extremely creative and motivating. And I find that it's so much easier for me in certain gyms. I work at General Fitness right down the road. We had a kids program there. I didn't use any of the props, mainly because they tried to hurt themselves with it. So I didn't use any of the props, and I had to figure out in a 45-minute session, because that was as long as the, these kids could go, how to, A, get them physically fit or more fit, how to get them to burn calories, which today, in today's changing fitness world, and children who do absolutely nothing the majority of the time that they are not in a specified program. How do we get them to burn calories? How do we get them more physically fit? How do we get them to prevent injuries and not let them know that we're doing this? It's kind of like uh, the cereal that we would like them to eat, but we don't tell them that it's good for them. You've seen the commercials. It's very similar, and the challenges that phys ed teachers have, because as well as fitness professionals, we're not recognized like we should be. We're not. We should be, as you stated, a gym is a building. It is not necessarily something that parents are willing to emphasize and or create a path to have their children become better. I found uh, with my son that there was nothing unless I got him into a program, which he just didn't want to do. What could I do, or what, how could I make a difference, basically? And I again found that with my son, I was unable to motivate him. I relied on phys ed teachers. And I figured, well, they're getting phys ed. I went in to watch some of the physical educa education teachers, and I found that they're really trying hard and no one's supporting them. No one's giving them the effort and or pats on the back someone with my credentials might get. And I may not be as good or as effective or as productive or as efficient <coughs> as some of the people out there. But then again, I might be that one person that might say that one thing that you've all been saying for a year. It just happened to come from somebody completely different. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went off. So I was asked today to come in to not only mention to you guys that I wish, and it is happening, fitness is changing. And children's fitness is changing quicker than adult fitness. So I work with children all the way up to four. I work with special needs children. I work with autistic children. I work with elderly patients. I work with teenagers. All in the fitness field. This has nothing to do with gymnastics. I can teach a handstand as well as a push-up, depending on what the child needs. I don't know every single child in the gym. I try to know them by name. I really do. And I don't quite get that. And I find that that's one of the areas that I need to emphasize, is getting to know the child individual. Because John may be able to do a push-up, and Sarah can't. So how do we balance that out, making John do the things that he can do, and Sarah not feel that she's being left out because she's not strong? And 
when I watched some of the programs that the schools offered, I did think there was some good things going. I did think, I did think that some of the things that were being emphasized and or taught just didn't go all the way or to the next level or to the next step. So how do I motivate phys ed teachers, people who have gone to school for these things, people who are educated? I have an education in a very different field. And I feel we're all underpaid. I feel that we should be recognized much more. With all that said, slowly things are changing. One of the first things that I tried to do when uh, USA Gymnastics came to me and said, we would like a fitness program. It has nothing to do with gymnastics. I don't need to teach a handstand. How do I get children who aren't in gymnastics physically fit? So they hired me to go out to many different areas, schools, uh, um, <laughs> programs where, uh, again, a 45 minute class in uh, after school, in a gym, <coughs> without props. What did we do? And my job, when I looked at all of this, was to create an atmosphere of efficient productivity in an age, uh, appropriate age development. You know, four-year-olds compared to six-year-olds compared to 10-year-olds compared to 12-year-olds. So how do we do this? I was hired at gymnastic gyms not to bring in great gymnastics or to keep someone on a balance beam, which I can do in a heartbeat. My job is to make the coach's job easier. And that was a perspective that I try to give people, is how do I make, not only as a parent, but as a fitness professional, I'm certified in many, many areas, how do I make your jobs easier? And with my background, fortunately and unfortunately, I can be put in many positions where I am able to make your all jobs easier. So what type of feedback would you give me? So when I'm asked to do something that might make your jobs easier, what would you say to me? As a parent, a coach, not necessarily an Olympian and all of that, but as a parent and a, a coach and um, someone who really wants to make fitness an intricate daily part of the program. English, history, science, fitness, fitness, nutrition. But the three course meals that these kids brought in, actually the parents brought it in for them, killed me. Because now I have to take this full belly and keep them on a balance beam. Not only does it hurt to pull it in, that seam will never be straight. Therefore, they'll never stay on the beam. Therefore, I get an unhappy chill, uh, child. Unhappy gymnast, unhappy parents, unhappy boss. And it all started with the three course meal that they brought in. So I implemented in the gymnastic gym, these are the things you can choose it, check it off. Boy, did I get emails from parents. They should be allowed to bring in what they, no, they, they're not allowed to bring in certain types of foods. We always make reference to it being physical education. And the average person is not, I mean, often enough, maybe in the past, that PE teachers would throw a basketball out and say, okay, go shoot a basket. In the real world, when you get out of high school and or college, you're not going to find 10 other people or nine other people to go out and play basketball I mean, with equipment or whatever. Especially I love field world. hockey. You know, I'm not going to go find 21 people who want to go out and play field hockey. That's not real life until it really, I mean, there's nothing wrong with teaching team sports, at all. but you don't have the carryover value in real life. How do you, or do you, make a point of what you do today is going to affect how you will live as an adult, fitness-wise? Age-appropriate. Yeah. Age-appropriate, we try to at least get the point across somehow, some way, in a daily basis. Doesn't mean it's going to stick. <clears throat> but there might be one or two that it does stick. And that one child may grow up to be an adult be a fitness profession, who may be a prodigy gymnast who was asked to come here today. Absolutely. I'm here to validate more than anything else. The last thing I want to do is put you all in defense. Absolutely not. I'm on the other end. I'm on your side. I just happen to be more of a public figure. And 
I don't work any more or less than all of you. I just happen to be someone who might be able to open a door. And, and there will always be those extraordinary athletes, and, and, and it's a, it, but it's a small percentage of very all the small. The, the real people who are out there, and you're working with a lot of the real people. And then maybe those that come out and shine and, and go on to bigger and greater things. But again, when you're talking about the average person who needs to, to meet a fit line. 98% of them. You get your 2% that might make it into this greatness. And you get your 98% that just want to get there. Thank you for your time and your expertise. Let me just mention quickly the uh, Fall River Fitness Challenge finale is this Friday. You should, all, all of you who participate in the Fall River Fitness Challenge, your school students, but you should have gotten two free tickets, the two complimentary tickets. And if anyone would like any more, then they can either buy them at the door or better still, they can go to CD Rec on uh, 72 Bank Street and pick them up there. But we'd love to get people from your school because your schools are going to be recognized Friday night. Thank you so much for coming. People enjoy it.